great. Uh, yesterday, Ainsley did some globe trot, and she uh, flew down from New York to Florida after the program for an exclusive interview with the governor of Florida and presidential candidate Ron DeSantis and the first lady of the state of Florida, Casey. Yes, we had a chance to sit down with them at the governor's mansion and talk about their story, their struggles, their values, and what they hope to accomplish on the campaign trail. And we met their children. Take a look. Governor, First Lady, thank you so much for sitting down with Fox and Friends. We're excited to talk to y'all. Welcome back to yeah. Tallahassee. Welcome. Thank you. It's Glad good to, to be have back. you. Tell us a little bit about you and um, and how you how you met. Well, how we met. So, do you want his version or do you want my version <laughs> about how we met? Okay. Both. So, I grew up in Ohio, actually, uh, in Troy, a very blue collar manufacturing town. And uh, after I graduated from high school, I realized you can go south. It's warmer south. So, I was in Northeast Florida. I had gone to uh, college at the College of Charleston. And then after that, I went to Jacksonville, where I started working in television. I do a report here and there, I produced. And then uh, I ended up getting to, to be an anchor, which was, was pretty neat. Well, one day while I was in Jacksonville, I was out at a golf driving range. I needed to work on my swing because it was pretty awful. I was like hooking and shanking all over the place. But I had noticed behind me, someone had left a half full bucket of balls. And the other side of those balls was this guy. I was a lieutenant junior grade in the Navy stationed in Naval Station Mayport. I just happened to pop out to this range one day. I'm sitting there hitting, she's there. I see her looking over her shoulder I thought she was she looking, was looking at, at me. You. Of course uh, you did. You know, I, that's what I thought. So I saw the balls there, but I kind of used the balls as an excuse to start the conversation, and so we did. And then we got to talking, and basically the rest <laughs> is history. So we met over literally a bucket of balls and a beer at a driving range in Northeast Florida. But our son and our daughter are getting into golf, which is really cool to see because that's how mom and dad met. What does a day in the life of the DeSantis family look like? There's really no two days that, that are the same. Um, our kids, of course, are on summer vacation, so they're not in school. We just had, my son just did FSU baseball camp. We did tennis camp with the girls. But at the end of the day, it's just kind of like a team effort. We bring them with us uh, on the campaign trail as much as we can. I mean, we just want to spend as much family time as possible. How did you decide as a couple that it was time now to run for president of the United States? So I would say starting in, in November of 2020, the number one thing I would get on the street is 2024. <laughs> Our view is, is are, are you the one to, to, to beat Biden and actually deliver on this stuff uh, over, uh, over an eight-year period to serve two terms? And, and we came to the conclusion that, that we were the ones to do it and to get it done. And so, you know, there's no looking back. We both have this, this calling, and you probably know my story, right? Um, about a year and a half ago, I didn't know whether I was going to see my kids graduate from kindergarten. So October 2021, you're diagnosed with breast cancer. Today you're cancer free, yes. by the grace of God, thank goodness. Walk me through that day when you heard those words from your doctor and, and what happened after that. Well, you know, w anybody will say with a cancer diagnosis, when you start hearing those words, it's not definitive right out of the gate. It is, we see something that is problematic. And the really hard part for me was that I had a four, a three-year-old and a one-year-old in the house. And it's like very, very difficult when you look at your children and they don't know. And you know, Ainsley, to this day, they still don't know. They have no idea what mama went through. As a matter of fact, when I was going through six rounds of chemotherapy, six weeks of radiation and three surgeries, couldn't really use my left arm a lot of times. So I told him, I was like, I just hurt my arm because he didn't want to tell him. But through God's grace, I'm here. And yeah, this we, guy, I remember we, this uh, guy helped me more than you will ever realize. But we got a lot of uh, outpouring of support once yep. we made it public. Mm. People were praying for her. I remember the video, too, or the ad that you put out that was so touching. Um, you said, who was Ron DeSantis? He was the dad who took care of my children when I couldn't. He was there to fight for me when I didn't have the strength to fight for myself. You know, you just want to tell it from the heart. And I felt the need to do that because I was so tired of all of the hits he was taking, all of these false accusations about his character. Well, you've taken some hits to you. For many, she's the brighter side to Florida's angry governor. For others, she's become America's Karen. The Jackie O wannabe, the Walmart Melania, and then even criticized for your eyebrows. How do you deal with the criticism? One thing that the corporate media did get right about me, I do shop at Walmart. I think it's interesting, and you probably can sympathize with this, when they come after you and they're just calling you names, 
that means they don't want to litigate the merits of their case. They don't want to have that conversation. They want to call you names. They want to try to get you to back down. But I can tell you the number one thing, we will not back down when it comes to our family. Casey, how would you describe your husband? I would describe him as the love of my life, the father of my six, five, and three-year-old, and the fighter that we need to turn this country around. I make this assumption that people know who he is, and there are truths that they don't know, that he served in the United States Navy, that he was a JAG officer, that he deployed to Iraq in 2007 with the Navy SEAL Team Command Staff, SEAL Team 1, for the troop surge on the ground. He got the Bronze Star for Meritorious Service. And I think what's important about that story of him serving, he saw 9-11, and he wanted to give back to the country that had given him so much, and that is why he decided to serve in the United States military. It says a lot about who he is. Is, and I think it says a lot about how he views the country. Governor, they say she's the secret sauce. Yes. <laughs> is this true? Is she your best asset? Well, she, um, I, I think at the end of the day, she's just a very genuine person. She really believes in this country. She really cares about the country's future because of our three young kids is six, five, and three. When she does things like rally mothers, like she did throughout the state of Florida and grandmothers, since it is Florida, <laughs> we want to include them. Big and contingency now, in the villages. And, and now she's doing it around the country. Uh, it's because a lot of the issues that these parents are facing, we're facing. Uh, we're in the same boat. Uh, we're, we're very sympathetic to that. And so she is somebody that is very, very strong on the, the rights of parents and the well-being of children. We feel that if we can do something to be able to change the trajectory and indeed preserve our American Republic, and we can take one for the team by getting ha hit on behalf of the people of this country, we're going to do it. We're going to fight for your family, we're going to fight for our family, and we're going to fight for America going forward. That was great. Wow. You, you know, they bring out the best in each other, and when you watch them together, they are a great team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The What'd decision uh, for them to go and do this with young kids is really a big decision, mm -hmm. right? Because now they're on the road constantly. Those kids are, you know, little kids aren't like, okay, I'll wait here until you're done. They, they want to be right away, I well, thought. They said they feel, feel like it's easier to be a political family when the kids are little mm -hmm. because they can take them with them everywhere they go. The two older ones are in school, but they said they moved from Ponte Vedra into the governor's mansion in Tallahassee. It's three hours away. I said, did you keep your house there? Do you go back and forth on the weekends? And they said, no, it would just be too much. It's yeah. a three-hour car ride. We have to, you know, we pay for that. The, the state doesn't pay for that. It's just too much to go back and forth. The kids are little. We just take them with us and um, pack up and go. And they said the kids don't read any of the negative stuff because they're too little, obviously, right. to do that. So sometimes with these politicians, when you have teenage kids, it's actually harder on them, they said. Wow, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I know. And you th I mean, she really is, she's an asset to him. When she started talking about his record, you could tell, I mean, she is, she's smart. She's a go-getter. She had her own career. She gave all of that up to follow him and to, to raise the children. He went to Yale. He went to Harvard Law School. He served our country in the Navy. He was a congressman, a governor, and now a presidential candidate at a very young age. All right, and we know a lot more about the family than we did uh, about eight minutes ago. That was right. great. Thanks Thank for making you. the bigger trip. I'm so glad they allowed us to do that. Thank you to Casey and to Ron for opening up your home and allowing us to learn more about you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.